Good morning. We'd like to welcome each of you to the morning service here at Open Door Baptist Church. It's good to see some folks that we haven't seen in quite a while from back east and other folks that have been a little under the weather but now are above the weather. And we're excited about this opportunity that we have to gather and to worship our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our first song today, if you're using your hymn books, is page 429. 429, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We'll sing that first, second, and third stands. If you're able to stand, please stand with me as we sing. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Verse 2. Christ by highest heaven adored. Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come. Offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate deity. Please this man with men to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Verse 3 is the last. Hail the humble Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Laid it life and all he brings risen with healing in his wings <coughs> born to raise the sons of earth born to give them second birth hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Right over on the next page, while shepherds watch their flocks, page 430, we'll sing all five stanzas. <clears throat> while shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground, the angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around and glory shone around fear not said he for mighty dread had seized their troubled mind glad tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind to you and all mankind verse 3 to you in david's town this day is born of david's line the savior who is christ the lord and this shall be a sign and this shall be a sign the heavenly babe you there shall find to human view displayed all meanly wrapped in swathing bands and in a manger laid and in a manger laid on that last all glory be to god on high and to the earth be peace good will henceforth from him to men begin and never cease begin and never cease 
this time our children are going to come and they're going to sing a special for us this morning. You may have a seat. Y'all can go ahead and go. <laughs> Unless you want to stay up here with me. No? I didn't think so. Thank you so much for that. And a great message to that song. It's actually, um, it's my favorite Christmas carol, Silent Night. And a uh, wonderful message uh, of the words of the song. And uh, also I enjoyed watching out in the, in the congregation, seeing several of you, although you weren't audibly singing out, projecting you were, you were singing along, and I could see your mouths uh, moving as you sang uh, those words to that special song. Let's open our service in a word of prayer this morning. God, we are so thankful for this day that, first of all, we can pause at the beginning of this week, and we can honor you by coming to your house and by fellowshipping with brothers and sisters in Christ. And by singing praises, opening our hearts and singing praises to your precious holy name. Uh, Father, we are so thankful in all that has happened in each of our lives. That uh, there is one that is greater than all from within or without. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And Christmas is a time that we pause to stop and consider and celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we do pray that in the busyness of this season that our hearts would be calmed. That our hearts would be focused and, and fixed upon you. And God, may you speak to our hearts this morning. In our main service, as we look at a thought from Luke chapter 2, when shepherds meet to the children with Robin and Kylie teaching them in their children's class a little later. And God, would you speak to each of our hearts? And Father, the needs that we came with this morning, I pray that the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the comforter, the one who's called alongside, Father, would he take the precious word of God and minister those needs that, that are so, for many, are so heavy on our hearts. And God, would you guide us and direct us in truth? For those that could not be with us this morning, I pray that you would encourage their hearts. Um, for those that may be even watching by way of live stream right now, 
I pray that you'd speak to their hearts and encourage them right where they're at. I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Just want to draw your attention to a few announcements in the bulletin. If you picked one up on the way in, you'll notice that we do have a quarter sheet flyer for our New Year, or excuse me, our Christmas Eve service uh, this coming Thursday, and it begins at 6 p.m. And uh, we'll be having some Christmas specials. Also, we'll be having several different monologues um, that actually have 2020 themes such as COVID and lack of toilet paper and essential items. Um, worked into the monologues uh, with, uh, with a, a spiritual truth for Christmas time, and then I'll be preaching a Christmas gospel message. So we hope you're able to make it, and if you're able to bring some family and friends, um, we, we want to use this as an opportunity to share the true reason of Christmas. Uh, we'll also be giving a gift uh, from the church to each household that attends. So if there's seven in your household, it's not seven gifts but one gift for that household of seven. Uh, but we picked these up the other day at the store, and so it's a nice big mug, and it's got a whole bunch of chocolate in it as well. And so that'll be a Christmas gift that we'll give to each household that comes to our Christmas Eve service. Also want to mention just a, a few other things um, from the bulletin. Uh, just a little over a week ago, we announced the church about the opportunity to be a blessing to some children in this community. And there was an overwhelming response of our church family giving. And uh, Robin and Kylie were able to go out and do some shopping and wrapping of gifts. And we dropped those off on Wednesday at Coronado School. And uh, so those, uh, those children will receive those gifts. They'll also receive a gospel witness of Christ, of Christmas. And we also gave them uh, an invitation to our Christmas Eve service. So thank you for your generosity and your giving, and, and your giving as well. As you leave today, we do have Christmas cards over on the back table, and uh, they should be alphabetically from left to right, and uh, if you can't find yours, then see Betty Warner, and she will help you locate that. I uh, already mentioned about the Christmas Eve service, and um, I think that's all right now for the, the bulletin. Tonight in the evening service, if technology will work and everything, and I appreciate uh, Nathaniel's help with getting the service, I had... I had done everything, got it all set, and then when we went to switch a slide, all of a sudden the screen was like that Christmas tree was like all distorted and twisted, and, and uh, so in 10 minutes he got it working, I believe, and so we're thankful for that. Uh, but um, we're going to, for the first part of our service tonight, we're going to show uh, some Christmas carols, some Christmas singing uh, that Pensacola Christian College put a production together. It was their Christmas lights celebration. It's about 28 minutes long. And uh, most of the songs are of the spiritual nature, um, Christmas carols. There are some fun, fun ones, like I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas and Winter Wonderland. Um, but that'll be shown at the beginning, and then I will be preaching either the conclusion of Wednesday night's message or the conclusion of this morning's message um, depends how far we get this morning. And so that'll be tonight, and we're hoping to also have that available on live stream as well if, if, we can, if the kinks can be worked out. Well, our last song this morning, page 431, 431, and we'll sing um, the first four stanzas, which I believe is all the stanzas. If you're able to stand, please stand with me as we sing Silent Night, Holy Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in Sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night. Shepherds quake at the sight. Glorious stream 
Greetings from heaven afar, heavenly hosts sing alleluia. Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, silent night, holy night, wondrous star, lend thy light with the angels let sing Alleluia to our King Christ the Savior is born Christ the Savior is born Thank you. You may have a seat. Uh, Cindy will be playing a special then Kylie will be coming and singing a special for us this morning. Gentle Mary laid her child lowly in a manger. There he lay the 
undefiled to the world a stranger such a babe in such a place can he be the savior ask the saved of every race who have found his favor angels sang about his birth wise men sought and found him heaven star shone brightly forth glory all around him shepherd saw the wondrous sight heard the angel singing all the plains were lit that night all the hills were ringing gentle mary laid her child lowly in a manger he is still the undefiled but no more a stranger son of god of humble birth beautiful the story praise his name in all the earth hail the king of glory hail the king of glory thank you kylie and cindy for that um did want to before we dismiss the children did want to make mention it's good uh to have uh case and home made it home safely on friday night Katya is flying home, is it this afternoon? I think she'll try and be in the service tonight. And so it's good to have um, Katya and Kaysen home for the Christmas time. And then uh, I believe it was Monday, Ariana was a very special day for you. Graduated with your master's degree, is that right? And so congratulations on that. And I think, I think she's going to be going for a doctor degree or something. I don't know, but... Um, uh, we thank the Lord for all of her hard work and the Lord's help in, in making that accomplishment possible. Well, this time we'll dismiss our children for their children's church. The rest of you, I invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, and we'll be looking at a message or a passage uh, where I've entitled the message this morning, Where Shepherds Meet. Where Shepherds Meet. Um, Luke chapter 2, the probably most familiar passage for the birth of Christ, from the traveling of Joseph and Mary to Bethlehem, to the birth of Christ, to the shepherds receiving the announcement, and the shepherds going and viewing the Christ child, and then going and sharing those wonderful good tidings. And where shepherds meet really is talking where uh, the shepherds who were viewed some of the lowest of the low class, I read one commentator that said that just below the shepherds, in, in the day of which this passage um, that we're going to read about in the setting there, there was only one class in the nation of Israel that was lower than the shepherds, and that was the lepers. And so it was one of the lowest classes of society. But these shepherds, on that specific night, they got to meet the shepherd of their soul, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is called in the New Testament the Good Shepherd, He's called the great shepherd. He's called the chief shepherd. And so we're going to look this morning at where shepherds meet. The first seven verses talk about the trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem and then Mary bringing forth the baby Jesus. In verse number eight, if you'd follow along as I read out loud, the Bible says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. 
An angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let's pray. Father, I ask for your help this morning over these next few moments as we take a look at this passage where shepherds meet. And God, I pray that no matter what is happening or will happen in our lives, Father, may we continually come back to the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the, the chief shepherd, the good shepherd, the great shepherd. And Father, may we in fearful days, may we receive these good tidings of great joy. And may we allow the peace of God to rule in our hearts. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. You think about in the past few years how things have changed. Um, a big thing used to be birth announcements. Now, it was after the baby was born. Uh, many times they'd include a, a picture or something, just sending it out to folks and to family and to friends. You know, we had this baby, and we want you to share in our joy. Um, Technology, we can do phone calls, and that's a little quicker, texting, um, FaceTime, whatever type of video app you have. It's almost like you can enter into, not that you'd want to, but you can enter into the delivery room if you really so chose to. Uh, it seems that today the whole gender reveal is the biggest thing, right? And um, I just... I just Googled real quickly and read about five for five minutes about different things that people do to reveal the gender of their baby. And, and that's very popular. Um, of course, it could also be very dangerous as well as out in California. The big fire this summer, I believe, was started from a gender reveal um, that involved pyro fireworks um, in a dry area, which wasn't too smart. Um, of all the gender reveals, my favorite happened to be the one with dessert, where you'd bite into the dessert, and then you could tell um, what the gender would be based upon the color of M&Ms that was in the dessert. That was my favorite one. But anyways, um, when it comes to this passage right here, and the announcement of the birth of Christ, it wasn't Joseph and Mary that really did the announcing, at least in the passage here. But it was the angel and an angelic host that announced the birth of Christ in Bethlehem. So where shepherds meet, first of all this morning, let's take a look at the shepherds for the announcement in verses 8 and 9. The shepherds for the announcement. Here the Bible says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. First of all, the field of the shepherds. They were abiding in a certain field. Well, where was this field located? Well, most likely, we don't know the exact field, but most likely it was just outside the city of Bethlehem. And it could have been, the Bible doesn't tell us, but it could have been the very field where hundreds of years earlier there was a shepherd boy by the name of David that watched over his father's flocks. Not exactly certain the exact location or if David could have kept the sheep on the same countryside, but they were located near Bethlehem because that same night we know that they went to Bethlehem and they saw their Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So their journey was a short journey. Uh, not only did the shepherds receive the announcement, but also the Bible uses the description about some wise men. Why were they wise? It's because they understood the scriptures, and they also saw the sign, the star, and they saw the announcement. Now, they more than likely didn't arrive until a year or so later. So regardless of whether it was the shepherds or the wise men, both responded to the message that the Savior had been born. And I wonder this morning, how often... Do we take time in our lives to respond to the message that a Savior was born? 
How often do we take the time to set aside, whether it's personal worship of our Savior and reading His precious Word, or assembling together to worship Him? The shepherds, their worship was very close and very quick. The wise men certainly involved time and distance and travel and sacrifice, but yet both of them chose to worship regardless of their circumstances. Many times in our lives, it's a problem. The problem is not the distance, not the circumstance, but we don't take the opportunities that God affords to us. Well, in the field of the shepherds, we've seen their location. Well, what was their occupation? Well, it's kind of an obvious one, isn't it? They cared for sheep. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, the occupation of a shepherd was despised by Jews at that time. The Talmud equates shepherds with heathen. As a matter of fact, shepherds would not even be able to be a witness in a court of law and the, the law also forbid anyone from giving any type of charity or donation to them. As I mentioned earlier, the only class lower than the shepherd was the leper. And you think about the disdain for the shepherds, and certainly they, were, they, they had a, a special position because they received the message of the birth of Christ. But you think about how the world looks at the Bible. How the world looks at the truths of the Bible. How the world looks at God, at Christ, at the Holy Spirit. And there is certainly great disdain for things that you and I as believers would see and would view as of great importance. The world would place a higher value on monetary and material possessions rather than spiritual matters such as reading God's Word, such as sharing God's Word, talking about God's Word, assembling together as believers. You think about the ability to kick a ball, hit a ball, throw a ball, shoot a ball. can land you millions and sometimes even billions of dollars. And then think about many missionaries that struggle First of all, to get to the field, to take the glorious gospel. Then once on the field, still facing many obstacles, and many of those also are financial. You think about the difficulties and the challenges we have had in this great country of America this past year. But think about the missionaries, just as uh, things this past year have affected churches here in the States, so they have affected the missionaries. And the world looks at the things of the Bible, looks at the things of God, looks at the things that you and I would say or should say are important, are valuable and dear to us. They look at them as being foolish. It's no different than the disdain for the shepherds and the birth of Christ. Although it was a disdained occupation, it also was a distinguished one. You think about the shepherds of the Bible. Moses. He was a pretty good shepherd. Well, his lessons learned as a shepherd led him to be a great leader, which really was just another shepherd. I, I think the shepherd, the sheep that he kept back on the backside of the wilderness were probably easier to deal with than the millions of Israelites that kept grumbling and complaining. But Moses certainly was a great shepherd. We think about David being a great shepherd as well. As I mentioned earlier, Jesus Christ, the good, the great, and the chief shepherd. And how fitting it was that the the message of the birth of the great shepherd would be announced, first of all, to shepherds. So in the announcement to the shepherds, we've seen the fields of the shepherds. Now let's take a look at the flocks of the shepherds. Um, History records that most likely... The sheep or the lambs used in the sacrifice of the temple were from Bethlehem. Bethlehem being about a six-mile distance from uh, Jerusalem, where the temple was, where people would come from all over the land of Israel to offer sacrifices, specifically to keep three different feasts. And you think about those fields in Bethlehem and the sheep, and many of those sheep, those lambs, would be used most likely in the sacrifices in the temple. 
Uh, on the road to Jerusalem, there is a town known as Migdal Edgar, or in our terminology, translated as the watchtower of the flock. And it was a field where the shepherds would watch over the lambs that would be used for the sacrifices in the temple. And think about all of those Old Testament sacrifices. And in the time of which Jesus Christ was born, Israelites would travel and, and recognizing that they had sinned and they needed to have atonement. They needed to have covering for their sins. They would come and they'd take that lamb and they'd offer it as a sacrifice at the temple. I think of John chapter 1 where John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. The flocks that the shepherds watched, many of those lambs, quite possibly could have been used in the sacrifices of the temple. And those, those lambs that they were watching were only a picture, were only a temporary covering of what Jesus Christ was born to come and accomplish for all of mankind, and that is to take their sins away. The fields and the flocks of the shepherds. Thirdly, this morning, the faithfulness of the shepherds. If I'd say that there's one thing that is needed in our lives as believers today, it's faithfulness. Aren't you thankful for God's faithfulness? Aren't you thankful for his faithfulness when you look to the scriptures and you see the nation of Israel and you see over and over and over again their unfaithfulness? You see their forgetfulness, but God was still faithful to that covenant. And this morning, you and I can be encouraged that God is faithful. He is faithful to his word. He is faithful to his promises. He is faithful in times of testing. He is faithful in times of temptation. He is faithful in times of trials that we go through. And as we look at these shepherds who receive this great announcement, I'm thankful for their faithfulness. In verse 8, it says that they were abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. These shepherds were faithful, first of all, in their duties. In their duties, they were faithful. The word abiding means to lodge or camp out. The tense of that verb, abiding, has the idea of a continuous action. So the shepherd had a continuous duty to watch over that flock, to watch over those lambs. Just wasn't during the daytime. It was at nighttime. Do you think that there were some rascal sheep and lambs that those shepherds had? I'm certainly certain there were. The, this time of the year, our two dogs, Brutus and Roxy, they are outdoor dogs. But there are certain times of the year in the summer and also in the winter where they get to come inside. And um, we have a special place for the dogs. Now, in the daytime, we can trust both of them to stay on the back rug by the back door. For the most part, Brutus will not move. Brutus stands up. When he stands up, you know, okay, Brutus needs to go outside. And so we open the door and Brutus goes outside. Roxy, though, she's still young. And one of the things that Robin got about a month or two ago, is she got a new rug um, for the, I don't know what that room is called. I guess it's a family room because the other room we live more in, so that's the living room. So this is a family room. where, If you've been to our house, it's where the piano is and uh, where we have several couches. And so there's an, a nice shag rug in there. And Roxy has thought that that is like her personal rug now because it's much more comfortable than the other rug. So what we have to do during the daytime, she used to be really good at staying on the rug with Brutus, but now we have to fold that rug over because she'll wander. At nighttime, we've even let the dog stay inside at night when it's getting really cold outside. And so Brutus, last night it was about 9.30 at night, all the way till about 6 o'clock this morning. He stayed on that, as far as we know, he stayed on that rug. Roxy, we cannot trust. 
Roxy would probably find herself in the kitchen, opening the pantry door and eating out of the pantry, knowing Roxy, or knocking the trash can over and digging through the garbage. So we have a kennel that we bring in from outside, and we stick Roxy in there. And when I walked in this morning at 6 o'clock, it's still dark, but they can hear me walking. Brutus kind of moves a little bit, and then Roxy's tail starts wagging. And she starts hitting the inside of that kennel, and it's really, really loud. So I let her out. She stays on the thing. The, Roxy cannot be trusted. And those shepherds, when it came to watching over that flock, it's not like they could just, okay, I, I think I'll, in our terminology today, I think I'll check out and, and um, check my social media. I think I'll check the sports scores. By the way, Ohio State did win yesterday. They didn't play good the first three quarters. Not like Clemson the whole game. But anyways, they didn't take time to check the sports scores or see what's happening in the world of news or stocks and bonds. What were they? They were faithful to abide. Did it get cold on those hillsides? I'm certainly did. Did it get hot? I'm certain it did. But what were they? They were faithful to their duty. And what we need to do today as believers, what we need to be encouraged by these shepherds who received this great message was they were faithful. What a bummer to be a shepherd who missed that announcement. Be, oh, I got the sniffles. I don't think I'm going to show up on the, on the flocks tonight. It's my shift. It's my duty. But no, I'm, I'm going to call in sick. And they would have missed that glorious message. God help us as believers to be faithful in our duties. What are our duties? Well, Christ said simply to love God and to love your neighbor. The prophet Micah says, He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. From the shepherds, we see their faithfulness. They were faithful in their duties. They stayed in the field. They stuck to their posts and watching the flock. Am I faithful to the duties that God has given me? 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. John 15, 5, same word abide is used here as was used to describe what the shepherds were doing. They were abiding with their flocks. Again, that word abiding has the idea of continuous action. John 15, 5 says, he, Christ speaking, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. In your life and my life as believers, if there is not faithfulness, then there will not be fruit. God help us to be faithful in our duties as the shepherds were. They were faithful in their duty, but they were also faithful in their diligence. They were very diligent. Uh, the verse there in verse 8 says, keeping watch over their flock by night, not only during the daytime, but also at night they watched the flock and protected the sheep. Um, those words, keeping watch, again, have the idea of a continuous action. The words keeping watch come from the same root word, and it could be translating watching watches. Those two words together give us the intensity, give us the diligence that these shepherds had and watching their flocks. In other words, the shepherds just weren't going to punch in their time clock and fill out their time sheet. And going through the motions. Oh yeah, it's time to make sure that you know they have fresh water. Oh yeah, it's time to make sure that that you know so and so um, sheep isn't out wandering and so forth. They just weren't going through the motions, but they were diligent. They were passionate. And I think that both their duty and their faithfulness, doing what they knew they should do and their diligence in their duty, allowed them to be recipients of the greatest message that was ever shared. Unto you is born this day in the city of David 
a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. How many times in my life have I missed out on what God had for me in His Word because I got too busy? Because I decided, you know what, I'm going to start my day without spending time with Him. I, I didn't fulfill my duty. Yes, it's a duty. It should be a delight. I wasn't, I, I read the scriptures, but I wasn't diligent. I, I didn't, not that I have to have a five hour Bible study every day, but beginning reading the scriptures by saying, Lord, open thou mine eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. And not just doing a hit and miss, flipping through passages of scripture, but reading through the scriptures in a sequential manner and understanding the context of the passage and understanding that this is a living word. This is Jesus Christ. And he has a wonderful message every single day. But if I'm not faithful in my duty as a believer to diligently be in his word, thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success were the words of advice that God gave to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Psalm 1, the blessed man, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. The shepherds were faithful. Am I in my spiritual walk just going through the motions, punching in the spiritual time clock, or am I diligent? God has a blessing. Just as these shepherds received a blessing, God has a blessing for those who abide in him, who settle down, remain. Um, men and women and, and children, whatever classification you fall in, whether married or unmarried, or hoping to be married one day, God has some duties, some responsibilities for you, and God help us to be diligent. When it came to the shepherds, we've seen uh, the, the field. We've seen their faithfulness. We've seen the flock. Fourthly, let's take a look at the favor of the shepherds. The favor of the shepherds is that they received the glorious announcement of the birth of Christ. It wasn't Luke 2 starts off with Caesar Augustus, the most powerful man in the world at that time. But it wasn't in Caesar's palace that the angelic host appeared. It wasn't in King Herod's courts that the angel appeared. It wasn't even in the Sanhedrin where the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious ruling body of the nation of Israel, um, kept court and, and made decisions. It wasn't even there that the angels appeared. It was on those fields, it was in those fields to those shepherds that they received that glorious message. In the world's eyes, we may feel like we are obscure and a nobody. But it's not really what the world determines or categorizes as being a somebody. It's really the condition of the heart. And I believe those shepherds, their hearts were conditioned. And we see that by their response to the glorious message. Well, we've seen the field, the flock, the faithfulness, and the favor. Number five this morning, the fear of the shepherds. Right before the announcement of Christ's birth as shepherds by the angel, the shepherds got the scare of their life. I'll be a little transparent this morning. I am easy to scare. When Rob and I first got married, we'd have, um, before the kids came along, we'd have I guess you could say it was a contest to see who could scare the other one, you know, out of their wits. And I won't reenact when Robin would scare me how my body would contort because it's very embarrassing. I guess if you scare me, then, then you will um, you'll see that contortion. Uh, last Sunday morning, I was... It was kind of a little cold, and the, the heat wasn't turned on for the wing where our church office and the Sunday school classrooms are. And so I, I had, um, if you've been back there, there's a, a door you walk in, and there's a big room, and then there's doors off either side. And so the door to the big room was open, and the door to my office is open, but I had a little space heater. And that little space heater is like, I mean, it's loud. 
And so it's going on, and I'm sitting at my desk, so my back is to the door. And I didn't know it, but Robin had come, and, and she's standing right behind me. She told me later that she stood there for three minutes. And I was sitting at my desk. I wasn't checking sports scores. I wasn't reading the news. I wasn't playing a game. I was going over my notes for the, the Sunday morning service in that message. And then all of a sudden, she just reached over and she touched me on the shoulder. Now, I'm in the chair, and I mean, I think my heart stopped for at least... A couple of seconds. It's a good thing it started back up again or she'd get out the defibrillator and start, you know, shocking me with that. The, now, I'll tell you this. Brother Webb is an easy one to scare. We were on, on a Juarez trip, and uh, we were walking, and Brother Webb does not like dogs at all. And I was walking behind him. I came up behind him. I just made like a bark like a dog. And he, now, Brother Webb, you know, he's... He's wise. He's a little shorter of statue, but I tell you what, he jumped about 10 feet up in the air. And I got him. You remember that, Brother Webb? Yeah. Yeah, he's still probably thinking how I can get Pastor back from that. And you have perhaps had an occasion where you got scared or you scared someone else, but think about those shepherds. Uh, let's take a look at the sphere of the shepherds. First of all, the cause of the fear Verse 9 says, And lo, the angel Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. First, one angel appears, and then a multitude of the heavenly host. And one commentator uh, this past week, as I was reading, um, talked about that. And I don't know why, but I guess whenever I thought about the multitude of the heavenly host, I just kind of thought, you know, maybe about a dozen or 50 but one commentator said when it comes to a multitude, it quite possibly could have been from one horizon to the other horizon. In other words, what you can see being filled with angels and being filled with light and talk about a choir singing of a glorious message about the birth of Christ. And so the cause of the fear, um, most Israelites and Jews of that day believed that if they had um, an appearance of the supernatural, it meant their death. Talks about the glory of the Lord shown round about them. The supernatural light which God appears. In the Old Testament, this is known as the Shekinah glory or the visible, visible token of the presence of God. Matthew Henry said this, When we see him wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger, we're tempted to say, Surely, this cannot be the Son of God. But see his birth attended as it is here in the shepherd's field, shall we say, surely it can be none other than the Son of God. Not only the angel's appearance would that cause fear in the hearts of the shepherds, but also the sudden appearance of the glory of God at nighttime. And they were sore afraid. The character of their fear, the words, they were sore afraid. Their fear was exceedingly great. Uh, there's actually three Greek words here that are translated that we see these two words, sore afraid. The three words translated literally are they feared, fear, and great. The word great has the idea or it can be translated like a megaphone. You think about an amplification of voice like our sound system here. And if I were to turn off my microphone, how my voice would not be amplified. But it's speaking specifically here the context of their fear. It was a great fear. fear the fear was magnified because of the angel, because of the glory of the Lord. Well, we've seen the announcement the shepherds who received the announcement. Real quickly, let me just briefly share with you the statements in the announcement and specifically the statement about the scare. Because we can't leave the shepherds being fearful. We have to leave on a good note. Verse 10 says this, And the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. The first thing the angels did is they addressed the shepherd's fear. What good would the message 
of the Savior being born be for them if they were still of great fear? And I think of how many times in my life I missed out on what God had for me in his precious word. In the Holy Spirit's still small voice, what I missed out because I was so focused on the fear. And so I think it's key that first of all, the angel addresses the fear of the disciples. Fear not was not a suggestion, it was a command. And the command is comforting because of the source of who it came from. You know, if a person, human, were to tell you not to fear, uh, you may be able to trust them, you may not be able to trust them. Perhaps Franklin Roosevelt's most famous quotes that he's known for in his first inaugural address as president was a statement, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. But if you look back at that time period, there was quite a bit to fear. There was a man by the name of Adolf Hitler rising in power. Joseph Stalin in Russia. And then a man by the name of Hideki Tojo in Japan. And because of those three men, thousands upon thousands of not only Americans, but all throughout the world would die So just because a person says, you know what, you don't have anything to fear, you can't take that to the bank. But if God tells you not to fear, believer, you can take it to the bank. You can trust in Him and His promises. Christ is the source of this message of fear not. Christ is the greatest remover of fear. He's the one who has provided a way for us to have our sins forgiven, which really is the greatest cause of fear. Romans 8.15 says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Don't turn away from Christ. If you do, you have much to fear. Turn to Him and listen to those words, Fear not. Trust in those words. Act in faith upon those words. The cause, the reason for the command to fear not was because of the nature of the message. The message was this. I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. I bring you good tidings is one word in the Greek. It's from the same Greek word that we would also translate evangelist or evangelize. The good news. You know, the fact that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again, thats and that you can be saved from your sins and live forever in heaven for all of eternity, that is good news. And so the good news was a reason for them not to fear. It was a glad message. I bring you good tidings of great joy. As believers, our lives can and should Be filled with joy. Not sorrow. Not depression. But joy. Not because of our circumstance. But because of our Savior. Because of His promises. And then it was a global message. Just wasn't for the shepherds. It it says there at the end. Which shall be to all people. You know the gospel message. The good tidings of great joy. It's just not for you and I. It's for other people in your household who have not received it yet. It's for other people in your neighborhood, in your community, in your workforce who haven't heard, who have not responded to that good tidings of great joy. Well, we'll continue most likely tonight with the statement about the Savior and the statement about the sign, and then we'll... We'll take a look at a couple other thoughts in closing this message out. But from the shepherds, praise God for their faithfulness. Christian, don't get discouraged. Be faithful in your duty. Be diligent in what God has called you. Abide right where God's placed you. Fulfill his task. And yes, times are dark. They were dark in these times. But God help us to stand for what's right. God help us 
to do right and to trust Him in our lives. And God, help us not to fear, be fearful. May we accept the good news. Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Let's bow for prayer. God, I thank you for our time this morning. And I pray that the message would have spoken to hearts, both here in the service and others by way of of online. And God, wherever we're at, may you help us not to fear but help us to trust in you. And God, wherever we find ourselves as believers, help us to be faithful in our duties and diligent as we serve you. We thank you for the lessons that we've learned from the shepherds. And God, I pray that you'd help us to apply them to our lives. I pray in Christ's name. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, in just a a few seconds, I'm going to ask the piano to play. When the piano plays, it'll be an opportunity for you to respond as God has spoken to your heart. Whether there at your seat or down here at an altar, if you'd like someone to pray with, we'd be happy to pray with you and encourage you with whatever need that you have. But as the piano begins to play, would you talk to the Lord? There at your seat, down here at an altar, If I can pray with you or if you'd like someone else to pray with you, we'd be happy to facilitate that. Talk to the Lord as he speaks to your heart. The words to that song Cindy's playing, How Can I Fear? Jesus is near. He ever watches over me. Worries all cease. He gives me peace. How can I fear with Jesus? Father God, we're so thankful that we do not have to fear. We're so thankful for your love for us. And God, may we leave this morning not in fear and despair, but may we leave this morning in faith, believing and trusting your word. May we be leaving with joy in our hearts. And we didn't get to it this morning But God, just as the shepherds were faithful to publish the glad tidings of great joy, God, help us to be faithful in sharing with others the joy and the hope that we have because of Jesus Christ. God, would you continue to minister, to meet needs. We thank you even for specific answers to prayer that we've seen this morning with the group assembled. And we just want to thank you and praise you for your faithfulness. Bless us now as we dismiss. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Lord bless you. Have a great afternoon. Christmas cards are in the back.